Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today, well, we have a Dyson DC-17. These are getting older and a little bit more rare and very beat up. And this is one of probably the better performing Dysons that they made, but they don't make it anymore. Most of the parts are no longer made either, though there's a good aftermarket. So we are probably going to be able to fix this. We'll get into the Cyclone here in a bit, but the Cyclone, um, short story is there's a gasket that gets out of place and then all the stuff ends up in the Cyclone. So this is one of the harder ones to service just because you have a bunch of crap that will be in there. Uh, this is also one of the first ones to go to the new cotton style filter that they basically have just standardized now. This just pops right off. I'm just gonna start pulling things apart because we're gonna have to just basically wash everything. Uh, this is also one of their most straightforward designs. I'm not sure you really need a tutorial on this one. This one is probably one of the only ones that's put together like a normal vacuum cleaner. Uh, you know, it's got two motors, a base, a belt, like everything is pretty straightforward, which is kind of another reason I, I personally kind of like it. Oh, let's pull this off. Um, let me get the brush roller out and then let's see what broke off part of the brush roller. So story time is this is a newer one and I can tell that by the motor in the belt distance. Oh, look at that. One of the things they would do originally, this had a pulley on it. And part of the service procedure now is to take that pulley out because the belt is now shorter and there is a different amount of teeth on the brush roller. Yep, that does not spin. Yeah, that brush roller is gone. And these are known to chew through brush rollers. This also has two springs here, which fixed a lot of the problems that the DC-07, DC-14 chassis had as well. Uh, you still have side feed suction, which is kind of weird. And then let me show you my personal favorite feature, which is the hidden HEPA filter. So the only Phillips screw on the machine is right here, hidden in this hole. And once we do that, you can see the filter cover comes right off and you can see the HEPA filter. This one's been changed at some point, looking at that there's still white left over, which is a good sign. So you can see the motor is right there. Pretty much that's all it takes really to break it down for your basic service. Now, we're gonna go a little bit beyond your basic service here. So first thing we're gonna start doing is pulling these springs off. Oh, you wanna also get this YouTube off before I go any further. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a gift. I'm not sure what that is, but that's a gift. <laughs> There's always something stuck in these. Kind of a fun thing when they get given something you're not expecting to. So next is pulling this thing off because that's kind of, that's the part where things can go awry. So I'm just gonna take a big screwdriver and wedge it in until it comes a little bit loose. that one. Oh, all right. That should make you nervous. It certainly makes me nervous when we do that. Now there's a hose here. It's just going to wedge off. We got the hose. And so once this is off, now you have the wires and room to work with. And now we got to get into the motor area right here. And let me grab my, my tools for that. Let's see. I believe this is a 15 if memory serves me right. Oops, switch bits here. Yep, that is a 15. I'm 
again, you're just gonna have to like rotate it out of the way. With be careful with the wires. Don't overstress them. All right. And you can see just how cheap this motor was made. I personally like to just pull this motor out like so. And now we can wash this. See how nasty that got. Blah. And yeah, you can actually pull this apart if you want. Really no benefit to doing so. But that does unsnap this bumper thing. We can wipe and blow out pretty much everything we need to do from here and this motor will just have enough slack just to set it up there. So that's all gonna get washed. This is pretty bad. Uh, this is really, really nasty. All right, we now have emptied the cyclone outside. You can see it's still filthy. You can probably see that there's a ton of stuff in here. So now comes like the tricky part of doing this. Yeah, this is gonna be your service procedure. So what you wanna do is you kinda just wanna put a screwdriver or something down and you're just gonna hit it. Because there's a silicone gasket you're gonna break the seal of. See how this is starting to come loose? All right, and there you go. That is how that comes loose, like so. Let's get the vacuum going on here. Man, that certainly is nasty. Now we gotta continue breaking this down. Sorry, there's so much dust, it was jamming my drill bit. So I believe there's six of them to break down the sub-cyclone. Dyson was really experimenting with cyclones at the time. In the later version, this would not have nearly as many internal cyclones as this, this machine does. They would standardize on just having one in the middle. The two were unnecessary. And again, this one, the gasket's intact, which is kind of a miracle just on its own. There's so much dirt and debris in this that it really just gums up everything. You can see there's just so much, so many places for stuff to hide in this. It is just gross. Now, if you want to go all out, we can go in here and really just start taking it apart. All right, well, folks, we are nearing the end of our breakdown here. Um, so yeah, this cyclone is actually one of the cleanest ones I think I've seen. There's nothing in the, in the cyclones? No, there's nothing in this one because the gasket was intact. This has the later thicker gasket. This is the revision before they went to the monocyclone inside. So usually these are full of stuff. This one is not. The HEPA filter uh, was not particularly bad on this one. I mean, it needs to be changed, but it's not. So maybe this one didn't get quite heavy of use. Who knows? All right, it is a new day and this Dyson has been washed and we have received some of the parts. So we're gonna go ahead and put all this crap back together. Um, again, if you're not familiar with this process, I don't recommend doing this at home. Now, all the pieces went in the dishwasher, except for this because it's painted and this might have lead paint in it. Who knows, knowing Dyson. This had to be hand washed several times before it got clean. So let's go and start to put this together with all of its joys. And all the springs and stuff are in this, thankfully. It's not like the newer Dysons where there's an evil spring that comes shooting out when you separate it. So we're gonna put this on. And then once all that's on, then we're gonna start putting the screws in. If you think I'm doing that by hand, you've got another thing coming. Oh, and we also found this door hinge part. 
in there. All right. Yeah, it looks like all the screws are actually pretty much the same. So we're just gonna start putting those things in. Alright, so now we've partially put that together. It's now time to put the other parts of the cyclone together. So we have two things here, and stuff just builds up here. Again, this is a still got a little bit of schmutz in there, but it's it's clean and sanitized, the best of our abilities at least. So there's a reference point here, and you'll see it right here. So you just gotta make sure you line up those reference points. There's the arrow, bam. bam. Give it a little tap. All right, that's, that's together. Now, before you snap this bitch back, you have to silicone sally it if the silicone gasket is bad. Though, when I did this, the silicone gasket is actually intact, so I don't need to add any more silicone to this particular one. But be aware that, that there's a good chance you're probably going to have to do that. As you put this together, you need to make sure this is intact when you're done. So I'm just going to slam it, headphone warning, and you can see, even laid together. Gaskets intact, we are all good with that. So if you wanna see your Dyson Cyclone look really, really pretty, your clear bin, a little bit of pledge on the inside of that, or any furniture polish, vac polish. Now this can cause dirt to stick to it if you leave too much in there, but it really makes it clear without buffing. You can actually buff this clean. I am gonna wipe the gaskets down to preserve them because of our dry climate. I think that's really important over here. And you're gonna see that me do this all over the machine as we put it together. So then when you put this on, make sure the bottom's like that. And, and that was so much easier than putting a bag inside the vacuum, right folks? Believe it or not, this motor has been blown out and cleaned out again to our best of our abilities. Age of the motor, I am going to drop just a little bit of oil to keep the grease dry uh, from drying out. And it looks like we're going to have to do, uh, look at all that, we have to clean that out. And this is a uh, convex, so make sure you put the convex sides towards each other. Put that guy on. We'll uh, just hold it. Not too much torque. I never remember which way this motor goes, so we're gonna figure that out together put the belt on there and the motor sits like at a weird ass slant in there mama Susan don't demonetize me for that uh, all right and that goes in there next you're gonna put this on and here's where this becomes kind of tricky is you have to clamp some of this wire away, make sure it's in its home, in its path. You don't want to get it stuck in there. And now we'll put the rest of the screws in. All right, here's my drill. Again, don't over torque these, but don't under torque them either.
right. Next, what we're gonna do is get our T15 and check the torque. Because this is a plastic housing, you're gonna see me just be very gentle with it. All right, that's good. All right, so next we're gonna put the rest of this bitch back together. And the thing to do with this is you're gonna work on it now kind of like a sanitary. You wanna have it like up like so. And you're gonna see all the wires are just gonna fall into place. It's also time to twist the uh, nozzle hose into place. And thankfully, this nozzle hose is just a nozzle hose. It's not in a spring to keep the nozzle in place like the 07. And this is gonna go in here like so. There we go. That's in. You know, spelts in place, everything is looking good. Now we have a set of springs to do. And this is where a spring tool would be handy if you have one. Uh, a lot of sewing machine shops would have one. I don't particularly have one. All right, it's all starting to look good. Now, I'll put a link below, but this is a replacement brush roller. This is made in China. It's got better bearings than the Dyson brush roller, but the plastic's a little bit worse here. The brushes are very hard, and these can cut up any kind of carpet, whether it's genuine or replacement. So uh, be, just be aware of that. We're gonna soap the belt. This will reduce noise. All right, these little tabs, they go down in the nozzle. And then once this is in, you wanna check it, see if there's any play. Sometimes these need to be shimmed, but a lot of times they need to be shimmed. The whole clear section should be replaced. But again, parts are in LA. Now here's the other wonderful thing that happened is as we were taking apart, this guy broke off. So I'm gonna have to track down a new one of these but for now, we're just gonna put this on so I have everything as one piece. Again, you can see the brush roller sticking up out of the nozzle and you can see where stuff will get in the sides of the bearings. Another wonderful Dyson design. And then you wanna use a coin or a really big screwdriver, like number five or a number six. If you got one. Last but not least, let's plug in the hose. And now it's time to wipe off some of the other caskets and things like that. Like so. That is up there. Now things are still kind of dirty on this machine. So we're gonna, we're gonna do things to the best of our ability. A little bit of furniture polish will help preserve them. So this is just gonna snap back on here. Just kind of snap them on there. You can see our filters nice and clean. And I'll put a link below for the filters as well. Since they are available still. My HIPAA filter looked all right. I am probably gonna replace this at some time, but until I get one, I'm gonna run this. I think it will make a good seal on this particular vacuum. I don't normally uh, ever reuse these things, but like I said, this one happens to be in remarkably good shape for its age. Again, I'll put a link below for that so that you can help find it. So putting the filter in, there is a trick to this. And the trick to this is put a little bit of pledge around it. And the reason you're doing this is it's not only gonna help make a seal, so you don't just dump this filter in there. That would be wrong. You actually have to squeeze it in with a screwdriver on the bottom and get it, there you go. I just had it. Yeah, so you wedge it in like so. And then when it's in, it will stay in without the cover. And a good way to do is look at the pleats and use those if you have to flex it. Like so. Okay. 
now this is in we can wedge the cover on which helps hold it in place but again you have to put it properly in place before putting that cover on it's kind of a tricky dick like that and the one phillips screwdriver is going to go in here i'm just going to put it maybe this one might be a smaller screw And it's, it's an awkward guy to get to. There you go. I recommend doing this by hand as well, because otherwise you can just tear up this plastic hole that's undersized for the type of screw. There's one more piece I took off, which is this guy on here. And you don't have to do this, but because of its age, I'm just gonna give it very little, little tiny bit of grease on there as well which maybe will help some of the creaking and rattling, but probably not. It just makes putting this on there all that much easier though. I have a link to all my tools as well. If you wanna tools, oil, stuff like that, wanna see what we do with that. Now there is one more part we need to address with this, which is the switch. Oh, and the fact that the cord was put through the handle, that's not good. Take the switch off. We must now take that stuff off. And now we can get to the switch. Boom. And then when you want to pull the switch off, you want to grab a screwdriver and there's some plastic clips you need to loosen up right here. Just boom. Plastic clips are loose. We'll just put this on here. And you want to be careful because this stuff can all fall out and you'll have a fucked up day. Yeah, you can see where that switch has gone bad. Again, and there's a you have to release the clips when you squeeze these things. Oh, there's the switch. Luckily, it is a standard switch. So we can just replace it with a standard switch. And there's barely enough room to work with in here, so if you do get any of these wires out of place, they must be put back properly, or you're not going to have a good time when you go to put this back together. <laughs> All right. And I personally like to have the switches click down when I do this. I find it to be a little bit easier. And then when you do this, you're going to have to hold these gizmos in place Why you do it. Otherwise, again, you're going to have a bad time. So, is this one I have to wedge in or not? All right. So once it's all together, it clips in. You just wanna test your switches. Those are all very good. And I'm gonna test the whole cleaner now and see how it is. That actually smells decent for a Dyson. It doesn't have the weird odor that a lot of them have. There's a plastic odor and then there's like the dog smell that Dyson. This machine usually stinks pretty bad because of the stuff getting stuck in the cyclones. All right, folks, so now what you wanna do is you want to put this piece back together like so and Cyclone. So I guess we're gonna see if it works now. Well, that's as good as that's gonna be. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you or if it was entertaining. Comment below if you have one of these 17s. I'd love to hear about your 17 or your 17 experiences. Have yourself a fantastic day.